the military experiment is really interesting for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it's the only named experiment they ask you to learn about in your um, C1 GCSE. And it's actually a really, really interesting set of results. So, the idea behind this was to prove how life originated on Earth. So, what they did is they took the conditions of the early atmosphere and tried to work out if the conditions in the early atmosphere could have led to the building blocks of life. And the building blocks of life are things called amino acids. And that's what they were trying to make. They were trying to take all this stuff that was around at the beginning and produce amino acids. So the gases they wanted to put in there were carbon dioxide, where there was a lot of it in the early atmosphere, ammonia, methane, and hydrogen gas. Now the conditions they used, there was a lot of water to try and stimulate the oceans, there was lots of rain, it was a very, very um, stormy time, and to also re replicate the stormy time, they used electrical sparks to represent the large, large amounts of lightning that were in the atmosphere at the time. This is the setup that they used. So over here we have the early ocean, or as close to the early ocean as they could get it. You're going to have loads of different things dissolve in there. You're going to have our water and all of our different gases. And they heated this up. So all of the gases um, evaporated um, up here. And then in this bit here, lots of electrical sparks are running through. This is trying to stimulate the early lightning, try and get things going. This is a condenser where things turn back into water. And then down here we have our little reservoir of water where they could take samples out. So after this reaction had been going on for about a week, they looked at the brown goo that was at the bottom and they found in there amino acids. Now these amino acids are the building blocks that make up our protein, that make up our bodies, that make up plants, that make up animals, that make up anything. So they showed that this primordial soup had the potential to go on to create life. Now this is just one theory about how life on Earth started. Other ones include extraterrestrial seeding, and of course there are lots and lots of different religious theories about how life on Earth came about. So what we started with, water, hydrogen, ammonia, methane and carbon dioxide. All of these things were mixed up in the middle, and after a while they turned into aldehydes, and hydrogen cyanide. Further modifications to these turns the aldehydes and the hydrogen cyanide into urea and methanoic acid and then these can further be turned into our amino acids and they produce lots and lots of different amino acids. These are just two of them. Loads of different amino acids were produced in this. Now the controversy starts because in 1952 when Milo and Nero did the experiments these are the gases that they used. However, in 1983, better understanding of what the early atmosphere looked like meant that they repeated the experiment with just carbon dioxide and nitrogen, which was thought to be better representative of what the early atmosphere was like. And unfortunately, they didn't get any amino acids. Now, in 2007, Bada repeated these experiments with carbon dioxide, nitrogen, iron and carbonates because the problem they had in 1982 is that this solution was really really acidic and the really really acidic solution was destroying or preventing the production of any amino acids. When you add in the iron and the carbonates it removes the acidity from the solution allowing amino acids to be produced. So over here in 1952, they had a brown goo. 
Here they had a colourless goo, and then in 2007 they had a colourless goo. Now this is absolutely not the end of the story. There is more to this, we just don't know what it is at the, at the moment. And this is one of the fantastic things about science, is that we're still discovering things all the time. And just because somebody's done an experiment and found that it either worked or it didn't work, doesn't mean that we have to stop looking at things there. We can go on, we can improve things, we can change things, we can develop things. So just a final word on naming. This is the Miller Ure experiment. Now, looking at that name, you would think that Miller and Ure worked really, really closely together. That's not the way things are named in science. Miller was a student and Ure was the teacher. So, teachery person sat in his office. I'm sure he had some input, but he wasn't the person actually doing all the hard work. The person doing all the hard work was Miller, and it was actually in Ure's lab where they did the experiment. I, I used to work in a lab, and I just wanted to add that little fact in for you. I really hope you found this video helpful. You can join my online classroom at Patreon where you'll get weekly assessments so you can keep improving and at the same time support me. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss anything. To keep up to date you can follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook. And for extra resources, blogs and all of the videos in order you can visit my website primrosekitten.com. Thanks for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed it. Any comments, questions or corrections down below please.